to the Advocacy Podcast. I'm Ryan. I am Tristan. Episode eight, eight. season two, episode season two, eight. 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 Yeah, I was gonna say nine, but I'm getting ahead of myself again. Dude, nice, uh, nice haircut, homie. Like, like that fade. Looking, yeah, it's actually it's pretty. It is pretty solid. It's, it's a it's low a nice fade. fade. I wish it was a little bit higher. I'm I'm more but, of a. I mean, you can tell I'm a I'm a high fade guy. I like yeah. to go up. I like the higher fade because it when it grows out, I don't get like the cotton ball poof thing going mm-hmm. on right there. Like where it kind of. Like, no, I totally got you. That's why I usually do them that way too. And uh, it was a new guy though, because my normal guy moved to the new location they opened in Liberty Lake, and his name's Lobby. He's awesome, by the way. So if you're ever over there, dude gives you a great haircut. Um, well, what's the place? Maverick Men's Barber or Salon or something like that. Men's Hair Maverick. Okay. Yeah, it's they're good. Not like, a gas station. No, not the kids. The <laughs> Maverick next to the Maverick gas station on Ramsey. Perfect. Uh, um, but yeah, no, I mean, I was, it's kind of like disappointing. You find somebody like, you're like, yeah, you do like, I walk in, he knows what I'm getting for a haircut. He's been yeah. doing it that long now. And then dips and I'm not following him. For me. Like, I'm not going to go have to like wear a mask while I get my haircut. Yeah, no, I don't. Mm. And if you if you wear masks, it's fine. You just do you do you. You do you, boo. We do us. You know that's uh that, that's how we roll. We live in the land of freedom here. Yeah, <laughs> but no, you look good, dude. Thanks. And um, oh hey, uh, Patriot is at Nutri Shop Cordelaine. Yeah, sweet. Actually, there and the best life Cordelaine downtown. Yep. So and uh, and, looking and at, still at Anchor Coffee in Cordelaine. Cool thing is that uh, looking at some other new products that we're uh, we're not going to talk about yet. That we've been talking with Justin about and uh, potentially some new scents. One that's not going to happen probably, but I think would be hilarious. I'll go for it. <laughs> we, muff Moose? No. No? Not that? <laughs> not okay. that one, no. I'm still saying that's a win. <laughs> what was that? I didn't even know what I would name it, but it was like the scent of dad where it'd be like fresh cut grass, charcoal, maybe a hint of gasoline. That was the, uh, the dadvocacy scent. Yes. Because as... It's, but it would have it to smell like, like it smells like getting yelled at for holding the flashlight wrong. Yeah, I think it'd be totally <laughs> perfect. Just name it advocacy. It's the joke scent. <laughs> Fresh cut grass, a little hint of gasoline, some charcoal. You know, maybe some some beef or whiskey or beef or something on the back end. You know, actually, I think that legitimately, depending on how much you would have of each scent, you might be able to make something nice out of it. You could easily. It would it would take some tweaking, but you'd really have to just or like new tires. Everybody loves the scent of fresh cut grass. Yeah. I don't know anybody that doesn't. Do you? Oh, hey, it can be sweet too. That's where I'm like thinking. I'm like the fresh cut grass could have like the sweet note. The charcoal wouldn't be bad either, because it's like that earth. You'd have a, a like, back note of that because a yeah. lot of uh, a lot of scents cedar like, was the other one I'd throw. Yeah, in. but and, and a lot of cedar's a great smell anyway. Yeah. But I'd want to tone that a little bit with the charcoal because they're going to blend too well. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd want to add some spice to it. Um, yeah, I just to just to make it pop a little because like when you think about a dad mowing the lawn, it's summertime. It's what in the <laughs> hell, Dustin Silva <laughs> again? Freaking seriously <laughs> again? It's like two for well, How? two of the last three episodes. Okay, the quote. The, the issue is like, I never turn my phone on sound. <laughs> like I hate. That's pretty funny. Good lord. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. I apologize. <laughs> but yes, but I mean, you think about you think about like summertime and dad's cutting grass and it's like. That's where the whiskey. Fresh, clean air, or bourbon, you know, is coming through. Maybe, that would add a spice to it. The bourbon Maybe or some whiskey. scent of flour, right? Yeah. You'd have the cut grass. You'd have dad swigging whatever he's drinking. Some dandelion. I mean, you and but you would, you'd have those yeah. kind of scents. You'd want to pull them all together. Maybe. Um, I love it when they're out here like cutting like the Timothy hay. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, love right? I mean, seriously, right? Yeah. yeah. So. I, I think we could totally make a center of that. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. It'd actually be kind of cool. It'd be fun. And package it in a box. It looks like one of those new balance tennis shoes. That'd be so sick. <laughs> so sick. <laughs> or it looks like a tape measure. Or it looks like a uh, cargo short pants. That would be awesome too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the dad shoes or, or cargo shorts. Right would be there. Rad. It could be like socks with flip flops. Dad, because he fanny pack. <laughs> I don't know if we go that far. I don't know if that was ever cool. Smells I mean, like, I smells like socks with sandals. <laughs> Although, I mean, if there was like a, <laughs> if there was like a bottle holder built in, maybe it'd be cool. Maybe, maybe uh, we'll see. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I have to like justify having a fanny pack. Yeah. Um. So, a lot of people are putting their foot in their mouth this week. Dude, there's um. 
there's a lot of crazy happening in the world where people are trying to out you know, you know, like when you're like, oh, dude, you know, when you're a kid, and you're like, oh, you know, I, I hurt myself, whatever. You know, I got this little cut and your friend's like, yeah. oh, yeah, well, I broke my leg. You know, everyone's trying to one up each other. And it seems like they're trying to one up each other in the worst way possible lately. Especially when you confuse race with skin color. Yeah. Yeah. Like in a bad, big, 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 big bad, badly. Well, on national bigly. television. Bigly. <laughs> right. And I know everybody's <laughs> probably talking about it. So I, you yeah. guys are probably tired of this, but. We have to we're gonna engage. Beat, we're going to beat the dead horse here. <laughs> yeah, we have to engage Whoopi and her big whoopsie. But first of all, can we talk? Is she even relevant? What has she done? What was her last good movie? Sister Act? Rat Race? Sister Act 2. Was Sister Act 2 before or after um, Ghost? After. Because Ghost was in the late 80s. Okay. Sister Act was like early 90s. And 2. Wasn't there, and then she was in Rat Race. She was all yeah. Well, I guess I guess I think that might be her latest one. I don't. Maybe. I don't know, dude. She like, was in Little Rascals on a as Buckwheat's mom. Does that even count? She wasn't a she wasn't a lead character at all, right? I just remember, hey Buckwheat, there's your mom, and he goes, Whoopi. Yeah. <laughs> and it's only funny if you know, but the kids yeah. that watched it had no clue. No. Yeah. No. Um, I don't. I. I don't know how relevant she is. She's on the view and who really like do people, do outside people even of watch like, that anymore? Outside of like Uber liberal old ladies, I don't know who watches it. And, Cause their view is awful. Yeah. The view they, is like, that's the worst view ever. It should that's not like be, looking at like, it's like building a million dollar house, looking into it like a landfill. It should be called bad opinion <laughs> or opinions. Yeah. Well, or, or, misinformed judgment they, they had candace cameron on for a little bit right yeah she actually had good opinions she did and that's why she's not there anymore I and then they had uh um what's his name that was a senator mclean uh, mccain's daughter oh yeah she was and, on there for a while but she had good she kinda, opinions also she kind of turned libby too though I th I th so when you're surrounded by that and you're, you're trying an to engage chamber? yeah you really yeah. and people do that that's that's why you get sucked into these crazy things yeah that's what i've appreciated like We'll talk about him in a minute, though, too. But, yeah. Um, but we do appreciate him a lot. Joe. Yeah. We, Rogan. Yeah. yeah. We really appreciate Joe. Because he's big, willing to take on anybody. And, well, his, his thing is Dan that. Bongino is like, dude, if you're lip, come is, on my show. Well, he's, he, it's not that he's taking him on. He wants to know. He's yeah. genuinely intrigued by other people and their thoughts. And he goes, hey, come on here. Let's talk about it. But if you if you are that yeah. guy that, that's talking wrong, he'll call you out and be like, no, you no. And, then, and then he'll tell you about like you should be doing shrooms and taking LSD and eating elk meat, but yeah, yeah, trip on an acid, thinking about you know aliens. go hunting, go on, go on a mm -hmm. yeah meat eater, <laughs> the carnivore diet, with Steve Ranella, yeah. dude, and um and also uh, one of our favorite guys, uh, the psychology teacher, old oh Jordan B Peterson, yeah, his daughter went carnivore and got rid of all of her medical issues, yeah. all of them. So Shane Eden went carnivore. And lost it. Like he's slimmed down a ton. Not gonna lie, man. I I will be. I'll be honest. That's when a hardcore I eat, diet, though. That's hardcore. When I eat more meat than anything, I feel amazing. <laughs> yeah, and I've never really done like heavy meat. It, it's before. not really. It's not. I've like done a, keto. Well, so this is like. It's not really a thought for me. Like that. I I'm just like. I want to eat. I'm lazy. Yeah. Right. I've so been I'm eating like, a lot of meat and sweet potatoes. Uh, sweet potatoes are bomb. I love. Uh, so good, but like. I'll do like four burger patties and an egg on top of each one. Yoki. I think we answered our question with how relevant is Whoopi Goldberg because we ended up talking oh, yeah, about you're food right. instead of Whoopi Goldberg. Because big Whoopi. <laughs> but anyways, so okay, if you so, don't know what yeah. she did. That's, that's, you're right. Um, say it, she please. stepped in it, man. Like she confused race with skin color in the worst possible way by downplaying the freaking Holocaust. In a big way. Now it was just white people attacking each other. So the issue here what? is, is that Whoopi didn't do her research. She doesn't no. realize that there is a genetic trait that has and is quantifiable to the Jewish race. Now mm -hmm. you can become a Jew of religion, the yes. faith, right? We're talking not faith. We're talking race and they yeah. are being exterminated. Correct. Not, so not, you, you can join the Jewish race and follow Judaism. Yes. Without being Jewish of race, yeah, faith and race, right? Now, 
she's right and wrong. I'm not to support her because I think she should be taken off every platform. Um, and she so if she's not willing to do a research about talking about the Holocaust, what else isn't she doing her research on before she spouts her opinions? Oh, everything, everything, clearly everything, everything. Right? So her statement is it's the Nazis were just killing white people, right? Her argument is that white people killing white people, people is okay. It's that, a, it wasn't that, that's bad. what it was, right? Yeah. It's not that bad. So my question to Whoopi is, does that mean black on black violence in cities like Chicago, where young kids and young girls and women and men get killed in drive by shootings on the regular is okay also? Well, I would look at the response to it from, from her own party. What is that overwhelmingly? What is their response to it? I, well, they, they have it. none. They ignore it. Yeah. Completely. Sweep it on the rug, right? Yeah. And we don't, we don't want to get political, guys. No, but this, we're is, not, a, but this, this is, is a human issue. It's a human, yeah, and it really is. I mean, you, you, don't, you don't downplay the genocide of anyone. And I'm, I'm talking the, the Jews, the Polish people. We'll the, get into that, too. The Hutus and the Tutsis, the Shiites. The Irish. And the, yeah, I mean, Sunnis. The Irish, the Italians and the Irish in the United States and how they were treated like less than anything. The Asians that came over. The Polish community was treated poorly. The, I, mean, I mean, seriously, right? So we, the thing is that it seems like they want to stomp out all this history just so they can go, oh, we're better people now. Let's forget it. No, we have to remember it because it's going to be repeated if we don't forget it. We have to be on always vigilant. Well, and that's the thing. Like, I mean, we Man, want to remember it. And right we have, well, yeah, but like we have Black History Month this month, right? Yep. Let's not forget what they went through and still do to an extent now. Let's not forget that, right? Yeah. Slavery, the civil rights issues in the 1950s and 60s and early 40s and through the awakenings of our country, right? Like, we can't forget that. So I mean, why in the world should we, like, look at in, in Whoopi, Whoopi's lens of, oh, it's just white people attacking each other. There's just some pe- And in the words of Ilhan Omar, it was just some people doing some bad things. Yeah, that's, I can't say what I, what I want to say. I won't. No, that is a heart issue is what yeah, that is. No, it absolutely is. And so like with Whoopi's, Whoopi's issue that I have is, is that when you confuse race and skin color, that is a reflection of where our society is headed with some of these arguments of like, they're not based in fact, they are based in emotion. Let, let's have another fun, a fun side note on this. Whoopi is saying that the Nazis just killed white people, right? They went through the streets and murdered them. Um, that means she has to admit that white people have been oppressed. Mm-hmm. Hey, am I wrong? No. You absolutely have to, right? And genocide is absolutely, I mean, the, the pinnacle of oppression, right? Nazi squads going around killing people in the streets. Um, dude, millions of others. I mean, like, so they, they said it was what? Six or seven million Jewish people murdered? Well, the original Jewish people were brown people. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I yeah. mean, yeah. Like, Jesus was not a white man. He was definitely a, yeah, he, he is not that, he's not the picture that's hanging on your wall at grandma's house or in the basement. Or in the front of the Book of Mormon or wherever else you might see yeah. it. He is definitely looking more something like Saddam Hussein. Well. I would imagine <laughs> gentler features and okay. much kinder and like, someone you want to hug. <laughs> like, <laughs> But I mean, but he, if, if you come from that area, yeah, you're yeah. more than likely going to look like that. Yeah, the Fertile Crescent. Yeah, you have, yeah. The, there's a distinct feature that those races of people have right Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah and you know so like so much of what she said is so incredibly like stupid and wrong that it's like it's hard having this conversation now do you think that that these celebrities say these things without thinking or with thinking so that they get some sort of relevance to be bad any publicity is good publicity is what they what they think honestly no this is what my opinion. You want, this is what I think. I think they're uneducated. I think they are so based and so running off of emotion and using hot points that they hear on rep- repetition as thinking that that is educated thought, that they mm. operate within that. And that is, that is the pure definition of ignorance. Dude, I think that's they a good assumption. They are ignorant. I think that's a totally good assumption. Hmm. I like it. Okay. So let me go off about enlightening people that don't know sure we're going to just just a little history okay so we had millions of jews murdered we know that and in the worst possible ways 
And we never talk about the non-Jewish people that were involved. Mm -hmm. Catholics, Christians, Poles in a major way, which were non-Jewish or, or Jewish for that matter also. Gypsies were murdered, right? Um, and, and these people, they were killed because they were considered less than, or they were assumed that they were harboring somebody, or they wouldn't, I mean, there were JWs, and I'm going to put that also, the people that would not salute the Aryan flag because they were like, no. Well, and you could look at what the Nazis did to Russians that they captured. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, they were hanging them on crosses upside down. Yep. So let's, I, most people don't know, but I, I was reading an article about, about this written by a Jewish lady and she wanted to talk about the Polish people, the Poles, because they were, I mean, the, proportionally they suffered the largest losses of anybody in world war II, which is insane. So the first thing we know is that Hitler said to kill them without pity or mercy, all men, women, and children of Polish descent or language or language. If you spoke it, that was it. He wanted living space, right? Heinrich Himmler, if you don't know the Himmler name. Himmler is like the worst human being on planet. 100%. Um, I hope. I, I he is burning in the pits of hell right now. Let's hope so. And I hate saying it, but it's true. He said, all Poles will disappear from the world. Wow. The Soviets, the Ex Soviets yeah. hated the Poles too, right? So here's something crazy most people have no clue about. The first 21 months of Auschwitz, it was only inhabited by not by Poles, non-Jews. Mostly, sorry. The Jews, most of them were in Nuremberg. They were in they weren't, the other They weren't transported camps, yet. Yeah. Yep, exactly, yeah. So the first ethnic Pole died in June of 1940. The first Jewish person, October of 42, two years later. Two years, right? So, I mean, like, there, it, it seems like there's this giant growing populace that wants to remove the Holocaust from history books. Well, and, you know, you look at to why, ignore it. why did they hate the Polish people so much? I can't even Poland. Fathom. Poland was sitting on an immense amount of resources in the region. Oh, were they? I had no idea. I just thought he was a dick. Well, and then there was also <laughs> the interactions from World War I. There was the fallout from that. There was before that. I mean, there's so much of the, the history that goes back behind the scenes of this that yeah, it was there was the revenge tour of Hitler, but there was also the if you it was easy to justify exterminating the Poles because of the contention that already existed with everybody around the region. Hmm. So it was easy they were an easy target, right? And so yep. once you pacify the masses by deadening the senses of what you're doing to them, now you can get your true target. That makes sense. That's how de that's devious though. I mean I mean it's sociopathic and everything else, but like history behind the scenes and the psychology of like Nazism is how they started just, and how they just, it's crazy. And it's like, it started with, you know, like singling them out, make it, put a star on them, single them out, make sure that they're known and they're ashamed of who they are, or what they're doing. You need to shame them, shame them. Okay. Now we're going to start capturing them. If, if the shame isn't keeping them also, in the house, they're sick and they're dirty yeah. and you know, don't they're, interact with them. They're yeah. They're going to weaken our race. They're going to make us less, you know, they're going to hurt us. And where are we hearing that nowadays? Yeah, I don't, I'm not comparing, not, I'm not know. comparing the Holocaust to what's going on now, but the but psychology. Yeah. yeah the psychology is right there. Right there. It's crazy how they would take these, uh, the poles, if they were blue eyed and blonde haired poles, they would take them and um, dissect them basically to find out how come this dirty thing could look pure. Yeah. Hitler having green eyes. It just doesn't make sense, dude. It does, doesn't. Hitler had freaking drive me bonkers. I don't understand. I was like, well, you need blonde hair and blue eyes, but your leader is not. Yeah. Aryan. <laughs> they're just, there's, there's too much stupid. And it, it, I mean, it has to be addressed eventually. And people out there, if you're out there, I mean, I mean yeah. stand up for this crap because it's ridiculous. Any kind of atrocity needs to be remembered. This is why education is so powerful. It really is. I mean, dude, even, even in our history books, there were changes. Yeah. Every, it seems like every year they cut something out or they try and tone something down more and more and more until it's just gone. And you're like, no, we have to remember this stuff. We, yeah. And it's, so the weird thing, I'm watching this movie called um, Denial, okay. right? And if you're a dad, you can't say denial without the rest of it. It's not just a place in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And of course I said that when I heard about the movie and I'm like, oh, I'm dumb. 
but I'm a dad, so I have to say it. Um, but this movie is about a lady who, who goes to trial for libel um, in England where you're not innocent until you're, until proven guilty. It's the other way around. You have to yeah. prove yourself, right? And it's against a guy who is a, um, I, essentially he's just, he, he's a Hitler supporter. And he's trying to downplay the Holocaust and the murders and the cyanide gases and prove that, that those never happened so that the Holocaust would never be, would just be swept under the rug. And it's, this is literally, it's a, a real life event. It literally happened. And it's so crazy. Um, good movie. It, bonkers. Rachel Weiss is in it. I think that's how you say her name. She was the wife in The Mummy. You've seen The Mummy, I hope. Brandon Fraser. Okay. You just didn't never know, man. <laughs> I've seen the movie. Yes. Okay, but it was it Before was phenomenal. Brandon Fraser got dad bod. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. Oh my. He got uncle bod. <laughs> is what happened. Bad uncle bod. <laughs> but, but so I'm watching it, and you know when I was a kid, I walked through the um, the Anne Frank historical whatever they used to mm-hmm. tour the nation, and I was yeah. I was in Portland at the time, and I walked through and I didn't didn't do anything for me. But dude, watching the pictures of, of Auschwitz and the shoes and all that crap, no joke. I've the turned into an emotional. Walls, the concrete walls with the etchings I, of the fingers. Oh my dude. In a concrete wall. Like I that's was like, where I'm like. I was like holding it back. I'm, I'm like, I can't, I don't want to watch sad stuff. Can we do no, right? Yeah. And it sucks because the the older you get, the more, the more you understand it, the more it it really hits you. And I mean, my kids would probably be like, oh, whatever, you know, until they're my age. Well, until it's you like start valuing life more. Well, it's like explaining 9 11. Yeah. To this newer generation. You know, we have the first generation now that's like approaching adulthood that wouldn't remember 9 11. That's so weird. That's so weird. It's where it's like for us, like you, we, I could tell you the time and place and where I was and who I was with. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, and uh, yeah, I mean, I don't want to keep being the, the, that's okay. the, no, that's the right. subject, but like, yeah. And that's where I said education is so important. Right. And, and, and reading yeah, and parent, beyond what you're just told to do. And parents talking to their kids about it. Yeah. Like why? I mean, that, that's a big issue there. Well, and it's like, you know, from a value and a human rights standpoint and just a human treatment standpoint, it's like, is this okay? No, it's, of course it's not okay. I think anybody could say that it's not okay, mm-hmm. but you know what? There was like 45 million people that approved it. That did nothing. That did nothing. And then there was a generation of people that saw it and they would lie about their age to go over and jump on a boat and kick ass. Because they wanted to stop it. It's amazing. Do we have that now? I mean, do we have that now? No, I mean, we do not. No. There is an older generation uh, they're called 35 the plus that would in a heartbeat. Yeah. In a heartbeat. Well, that generation is called the greatest generation for a reason. I mean, yeah. to do what that they did, I like, I look at that and I'm like, that's an amount of sacrifice that these, these soft kids that are coming. Some of them are so soft. It's like, they would never understand, you know, they, they'd, they'd try to figure out how to have that battle in a, in a Twitter comment section. Mm-hmm. Instead of, and, and they look at these old guys with their, with their hats, with all their freaking like, you know, everything. Uh-huh. There's right. a reason they have, they, they still wear them to this day though. Yep. And these kids think they're just oh, I'm old farts, whatever. And you're like, dude, right. that old fart. They're just trying to get, <laughs> get free, free stuff or whatever. No. Do you know what the sacrifice of those people, what they saw? Some of those old farts tried to sign up at 15 to go fight. 15, 15 years old. Could you imagine your 15 year old or your 15 year old son mm-hmm. or daughter's friends yeah. being that hardcore being like, you know what? Hell no. What happened? And that's. That's sad. That's where we're at in the society. And that goes into what Sean well, Penn yeah. was talking about. 100%. I don't know if you saw what Sean Penn said this week, but um, I, I dropped this in, in our Dude, yeah, chat. You, you but, have to read this. This is amazing. Um, so Sean Penn said, men in America have become wildly feminized. I don't think that being a brute or having insensitivity or disrespect for women has anything to do with masculinity or ever did. This is Bacoli saying this, by the way. Mm-hmm. And I have a hard time like reading it and I'm going... Then in America become wildly feminized, right? <laughs> like he's talking like Spicoli, but like Sean Penn like nails it on. And he said some stupid stuff in the past, and I don't always agree with what he says, but I saw this and I'm like, holy crap. 
and he was getting grilled for this. So mm-hmm. um, he said, I don't think that in order to be fair to women, we should become them. He's speaking for men, right? Men should not become women. I don't think in order to be fair to women, men should become one of them. Yeah. He goes on to say, I'm around a lot of confident women that is are, that are not fearful of masculinity. Fear of toxic masculinity comes from being insecure in femininity. And it goes, but, and we talked about this. This goes both ways. Yeah. If, if you're not a masculine man, man, you're going to fear strong women. Yeah. I love strong women. Yeah. hundred percent. Fantastic. It just, man, it's, it's, it's insane that, I don't know. It feels like, how is this, his comment, even anything that you would want to argue about, you know, like I don't see it's spot on. I know. And that's where I'm like, I get kind of, that's why I hate media. Like seriously, <laughs> I'm starting to sound like get off my lawn guy, but like, it, this is why we're becoming jacked up is when this idea of like screwing with men and what men were designed to be and you're limiting them and you're handcuffing and you're essentially neutering men. Yep. Like, why do you think we're having issues within our society? And again, it's that he says that being a brute, having insensitivity or disrespect for women, this has nothing to do with masculinity and it has nothing to do with it. No, that's just conditioning how you're raised and just being a jerk. Like, yeah. If you're insensitive, that means that you've got a personality problem, not a man problem, right? I mean, how many how many little kids do you know? I mean, you might not know, but how many kids do you know that were raised by a single mom? Are little freaking douchebags. I mean, let's just be let's be real about it. And then it. they use it as an excuse to be jerks or something, you know? Yeah. And readjust my microphone. And you're, you're sitting up higher than me again. My back was hurting. That's okay. We're old. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I had one of those moments I was laying on the floor. Uh, over the weekend and you get the surprise like wwe knee drop from the top rope like, mm-hmm. for at the hitman heart style like yep. heart, heartbreaker from the top rope i got that from owen in awesome. my lower back it was like i was just laying there all of a sudden crack oh i knew exactly what it was that hit me i'm like oh, buddy no freaking awesome I, no did i've got a back stretcher on the floor if you want to use it i'm probably gonna hit it before i go yeah no totally. i mean it's awesome it, it, it is awesome but you can't get up after you're on it and you're like you're like oh you're still there you're like, help, I fall and I can't get up. Um, yeah. So we, in order to, to overcome this masculinity issue, this femininity issue, yeah. part of the reason why that we're this way now is that we don't have community. Yeah, a large part of it. 100%. I mean, I would say 100%. We, it, we talk about it takes a village, right? And so Ryan and I, we've actually gone rounds on this because we, I don't agree what community is. So, I mean, we, we haven't defined it completely, right? With each other. Yeah. And it's okay because we don't always have to agree. And that's the best part about well, our relationship. Can, and it's part of this, uh, this like purpose of the show is like, we yeah. can talk it out. And that's the best part, right? And so, we may not agree at the end, but we still might like go somewhere but, with it. Right. And I think that, I think the issue, part of it is that we probably do agree on it. Just that we don't define it clearly. So, you know, when you have a conversation and you're saying the same thing, but you say two different ways and you're like, oh no, no. Yeah. And you're like, no, wait. We're just saying the same stuff a different way. It's like the definition of between genius and insanity. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, finding a different way to get the same result. But like, so community to me is, is clearly the people I'm around. Right. Yeah. That's, that's community. Um, and that's how I define it. I don't, it, the, it takes a village statement. I'm not going to let anybody else besides myself raise my children. Okay. Right. I don't need help there. I might reach out for advice, but I'm not going to let them raise them, right? Yeah, I'm not so, going to. No, and I think. And sometimes that village does horrible things to your children. Yeah. And they can't. So being in community. So the It Takes a Village is, I use that as a, every person around you is an example. You should take the best from every person you know and apply that to you. And the worst, use it as an example of what not to do. So I'm going to pose this to you, right? Yeah, when like you were this. younger. And say you did something stupid, right? Like you got caught drinking at a party or speeding or something like that, or like you needed help or advice okay. from somebody, but you were afraid to tell your mom. Did you have another adult that you felt comfortable going to, to talk about that hard issue? No, because back then they would, the other adult would beat your ass too. I don't know. <laughs> but I had my it's friends. True. It's true. I, I had my friends and I had my brother, right? Yeah. So I would, I would go to people, but I, it wouldn't be another adult. Okay. And 
And if there was another adult that, that wouldn't punish me or wouldn't reprimand me for doing stupid, yeah. more than likely that adult might have had ulterior motives. That's my so, concern. So, um, and you had a stepdad, right? And yep. there may have been things that like your dad didn't give you that you sought out from your stepdad. hundred percent. Right? But he was, he's my family, stepdad, he's he was, family, yeah. not community. <clears throat> he was, he was right. Exactly. Yeah. So, and that, that's where it's at. It's like, oh, you know, that's, that's the pressing line. Cause then, cause I think about it as this way is like, I mean, I had like best friends and stuff. And like some of their parents were like super close. Like one of them was my youth pastor for a while. Yeah. Oh, I and can so, see if that. I, so if I had an issue, like I could go to Craig and be like, Craig, I'm dealing with this. And he'd be like, Hey, let's sit down and talk. You know, I could be at my buddy's house and get a heart to heart with my buddy's dad, like my best friend's dad. That's pretty cool. And you know, so it's like, it's, it's also surrounding yourself with the type of people that you, that you're around, right? Like that's kind of, you have to kind of toe your line within there and know like where your arena of safety is. And like, so I think, it's not, I'm not going to go talk to like my dad, like so-and-so uncle Billy's buddy that he goes and drinks beer with and give him my life story. So the, um, we had a friend who was a, a pastor also, or a youth pastor of some sort. I don't remember exactly. And he worked with Mark. Right. Yeah. So we all got connected, whatever. I started going to youth group with them and stuff. It was, it was a good time. Um, I'm ditching the pillow by the way. And and I remember this guy, <laughs> uh, whatever. Hey. Terrible video. <laughs> Welcome to Oppa Land. All right, here we um, go. <laughs> but we had, we had, we went and did fun stuff. I, I became really good friends with his kids. Um, one of their kids had seizures on a regular, which is where I first experienced somebody was doing having a seizure. Yeah, in the back seat of a station wagon, strapped next to this kid with no way out. It's like a, I Pete, can tell you a story about the first person. Freaking that PTSD, Tourette. dude, because I was stuck. <laughs> yeah. Right? Because a seizure, <laughs> Tourette's is fun. Yeah. Seizures are scary. Oh, this Tourette's was the violent kind. Oh, like okay, he'd, hit, he'd hit himself and stuff. Oh, that's, yeah. that's an, okay, that would be crazy. But yeah, like fast forward to a time we're all enjoying one of our favorite family meals, the Haystacks, right? And yeah. Haystacks is Fritos, Fritos in the bottom. All that, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All the goodness. I know exactly what you're talking about. I like to go meat, extra meat, and then yeah. um, refried beans. So I do, okay. it, you know, right? Taco extra seasoning. Cheese. Yeah. Yo, chips, cheese, meat, yep. cheese. Lettuce, tomato, whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All that, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> dude, it's so good. Though. I know. Right? It's so good. Did you ever have them in the in the Frito bag to go? No, I've never done I, I so want to do that. Yeah, that's the best for tailgating. Sorry. Super cool. Yeah. Okay, no, that's okay. Sorry. <laughs> Super cool, though. But yeah, so we're, we're grating cheese and stuff, right? And I take some and I eat. I'm like, ah, and I snag it and I eat it. He goes, hey, come over, come over, come over. I'm like, what? Right? And he goes, let me see your hand. And I'm like, okay. Because I'm trusting. I'm still a trusting young second grader, or whatever. I was sure. like seven or eight. I think I was seven at the time. And he takes my fingers and he takes them and he does this with them. Uh -huh. You know how that feels? Yeah, the finger. When lock. You take your knuckle, yeah, yeah. And, you, and you lock them together. Uh -huh. I didn't know what that was. So he crushes all my little fingers together because he does my entire hand. Because you can do it from behind. My stepdad yeah, told me that also. Yeah. That's weird. It hurts. Yeah. Right? To punish me for eating the cheese. What? What made him think that he had the right to do that? Right? Yeah. So I'm like, I go off my room and I cry. Later, I tell my stepdad what happens. And my stepdad is a mother you don't want to f with at all. Yeah. Ever. You like my bleeps? I love, I love how you like bleep it out. It's like we're hitting some button or something. I, well, I, I don't want to say it because I, usually in life, I don't really say it anyway. Well, you, I, we get tagged also. Yeah, but I just, I'm not a, I don't like to swear a whole we lot. We would lose some of our, our. Dick seems okay because it's someone's name. Yeah, but when they, the, yeah. Right. The algorithm <laughs> finds the swear exactly, words. Yeah. Then you start losing. Yeah. But like, I tell my, my stepdad and, and you can just see the fire and he's, he's a blonde haired bodybuilding CPA that and it doesn't make any sense, but yes, everybody thought he was a surfer, muscular, better freaking Spicoli. beefy. I mean, <laughs> the, the dude, he had, dude, he could fight. He was, he had everything going for him, right? Yeah. Everything going for him. And he got like sunburn red. That was his community that he thought was, <clears throat> he thought they were safe <sighs> and he didn't realize he brought him into the house. And so yeah. it was on him. Just like if I bring someone to my house that, Harms my family. That's on me. Or steals from you or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, which is why I don't just invite everybody over, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's like, he came back the next day after going to work and he was like, don't ever worry about it again. 
<laughs> comes I, back and the guy's got a nub. <laughs> I, I only, I, I can only imagine he had the conversation I probably would have had with him. Yeah. You know, like you don't do that to people. And so, oh. I, so for me, grownups weren't safe unless they were in my family and immediately there. Yeah. And that was it. See, like I, cause I was, I mean, I don't know. I guess I pretty blessed like childhood wise. Like my dad, I would hundred percent. My dad lived, my dad lived around the block from like his childhood best friend. That's cool. Crap. And like the families so cool. were super tight. And so I always knew him as uncle Jerry mm-hmm. and he, I wasn't related to him at all, but I called him uncle Jerry. Like as long as I could remember, dude. And he would like pick me up. We'd go like, he had an old class. My dad had classic cars. Mm-hmm. Jerry had classic cars too. He'd be like, Hey, you want to ride with me? Hop in. Like, and I'd be like, dad, he's got You're the cruising. V8. I'm going with him. Like <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And so totally awesome. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, it was like, but I, I was like, so I was lucky to have that. Like, and you know, he, he played baseball and played, you know, football in college and stuff like that. And like, you know, he taught me a lot of stuff too. And so mm-hmm. it was like, you know, baseball, he like worked with me cause I played catcher and that's what he played. So he's like, here's your mechanics. Like I'm mean, as a sixth grader, seventh grader. And I ate it up. It was awesome. Dude. I think, I think you had a good safety net, which is why your community sounds different. Yeah. Right. So mine, of course, I've got Lang Monica jr. Right. Yeah. They're all uncle or aunt to my kids. Yeah. And my kids have the community you had. Because I've developed that yeah. because they can call them and say, Hey, look, I screwed up. Can you come and save me and not tell my dad? And Lang would probably in a heartbeat go yeah. or junior would do that. You know, you know, it's like my friends that are really close. Like I don't put the familial tag on there and it's not cause I don't want them to be familial. It's like, because that was something that was done by my son's mom with everybody. That makes sense. And so they came and went and I hated throwing familial tags on things. If it's somebody that's not family, Oh, because like yeah. they have the open door that the, you know, a family does and too, to an extent. So the only like, reason why yeah. Monica and Lang are, I graduated high school with Monica. I know her before that. And I mean, they, this, yeah. we're talking like a lifetime of friendship. Sure. So I know they're never going anywhere. Yeah. They know I'm never going anywhere. And that's the thing. Like, I mean, like Brittany, like, you know, she's been on her show and stuff. Like she hangs out with Owen all the time. And that's, that's Brit. Like that's, that's Brittany, Brittany. I mean, and it used to be dad's work, Brittany. Mm-hmm. So we know nice. work, but like, um, you know, like that, I don't think it's going anywhere, right? Like, well, I think that you had a bad experience, which is why you don't do yeah. it, right? For me, those tags. Yeah, um, and meeting somebody else and, like, being with somebody now, it's like, mm-hmm. you know, like, what does that turn into? Like, you know, for now, it's her name, and it's like, hey, there's Abby. And, like. And we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. And, and so it's like, you know, well, things change. We'll figure it out when we get there, right? But mm-hmm. Like, for now, you can have that relationship. Like, that's part of the community now. Well, and, I mean, like, so you got to remember, Mark, um, for me, I, I called him Mark forever. Yeah. I didn't call him Dad until like maybe the last three or four years of his life. Sure. Ever. And that's, but you do, you did some growing up in that too. Well, I mean, I still told him I loved him, Yeah, but it was always Mark. And so it it wasn't until he had finally opened up to me and expressed how he felt and how he was proud of me. Cause my dad never said he was proud of me. He, He said he was proud of me once and then negated the entire thing because I told him that, he, so had a conversation with my dad. Sorry, everybody. Um, and it was basically, Hey, Tristan, I don't know how you're doing it. You're a single dad. How do you do this? Hmm. And I was honest. I said, look, you know, it, you, you just, just have to, do. you just do it. Right. And you know, when the boys go to school or if, if I, if I am working then sometimes we'll use their, their grandmother, not my mom, because she was in Oregon and he was like, Oh, that's how you do it. You know, it's and totally just negated everything. And I'm like, so you're not proud of me. Like, so, let, let's be real yeah. with this, you know? So like, there's a, there's a tense in a word that like you could use and it kind of like popped into my head. It's like, you know, it's not about me. Well, like about something, if you're about something, it's usually part of something that you are. Right. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, you know, it's not about me. Like as a parent, it's about me. Like it's part of me. Yeah. Right. Being a dad is part of who I am. And that's, and, and for you too, I see that with your kids. Oh, yeah. Like it's part of who you are. And that's just what you do. So you're about the business of fatherhood, like you're about it. And, and I like it, but you're not about you. Like, yeah. it's not, it's not about like who I am and getting what, what I can, what can I get out of it? Mm-hmm. It's parenthood's a one way street. Like it just sometimes, like, let's be honest, kids can be selfish. Oh yeah, um, totally. I mean, like, they're going to be that. If you're, looking for, if you're looking for somebody that's going to affirm you all the time, 
Not going to happen. Parenthood ain't. <laughs> <laughs> not going to happen at all. No. <laughs> but, not at all. But yeah, so like going back to like the community aspect, like, Sorry. you know, no, we're good because I think this all this all ties in really well. Oh, well, hold on. Well, let, let's, let's talk, let me define community real sure, fast go ahead. because we, yeah. we agree in this portion. Yeah, I think so. Family, friends. Okay. Yeah. So community, meaning being around other like-minded people, that's what we totally agree upon, right? Mm-hmm. Um, these are friends, they're families, maybe the groups you're part of, right? Yeah. Um, maybe you play in a bowling league or a softball team for me, cause I don't do those things. Yeah. I was in softball for a little bit. I know some people that play city league softball and they're super tight, like close, we, crazy they travel right? all the time. They do stuff. And it's like, I know. All right. All right. Whatever. Crazy, like, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. This, um, for me, this would be like a small group of gym buddies, my bro fits that are preaching the gospel of swole to each other. That's what we do. <laughs> bro fits. Bro fits. Profits, but no, that would be what happens when you try something out. Like, no. profit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, profit. It does. <laughs> it's a brocchini, but no, like yeah, profits. Like you know, yeah. this, these are these could be work friends. I mean, some sure. people we only have work friends because well, they're across the cubicle, and you're always just you're there. Yeah, you it's know? just really like I mean, look at people that I've met at the gym now have been like worked into relationships that like. My dad's getting tied into with a guy that I used to live with at, at Fuel. Like that's freaking awesome. Yeah, right? I just ran into him at church, and now he's like running this own ministry, and he's a youth pastor at a church here in town. I'm like, hey, let me tell you that's what my awesome. dad does. Like, <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of cool, like how like your community can ebb and flow and swell and shrink and like morph, and it's like an amoeba, right? And, and the communities happen so that you're not alone. Yeah, because and it has we, a core purpose, right? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Your community has to have a purpose. Like a place to belong to or to be. Totally agree. There's with that. a reason you're in it. There is yeah. something out of it intrinsically, but it's not like monetary, right? It's like for growth or for support or whatever. Like, dude, so I'm sitting here and I'm realizing my body language seems like I'm flowing away from you. Huh? I'm kind of like leaned in. Yeah. And I, I feel like, <laughs> am I a jerk? But it's like my back is kicked out. So I, I feel like I have to lean this way. So I can talk I'm to doing you this way because it's actually stretching this side of my lower back. Yeah. And so, just, so if anybody's watching this, <laughs> we're um, old, this, <laughs> we're falling apart here. <laughs> we, we like each other. I promise we like each other, but here is this, is this a oh, freaking, Hey, <laughs> Appa's butt in my face. It's like a freaking cat. If you guys don't know, this is Appa from uh, avatar, the last airbender, the cartoon Aang rides on this. And it, Ryan, if you haven't watched this with your kid, you need to. He probably would. Oh, you! It's freaking. He's, he's into. It's great. Stuff, it is so. great. All right. So yeah. yes, I apologize. We're digressing a bit, but this is you know our show. This is how we do it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, and, and and so it's it's you know being a community. I, I see is there's an important value in it, and you know I'm in a men's group. Like I've got a you know group of single dads that I meet with weekly. Like mm-hmm. they come over to my house. We'll have dinner. We'll just have snacks. Or we talk. Like we talk about the Bible. We talk about hard stuff. We talk about stuff we're going through. Yeah. But the other cool part of it is the kids are there and so, the so kids get their little community they get their too. community built too oh, and that's they, really cool and the cool thing about it is like we're all single dads right and we're like mm-hmm. we've all been through that season and so the kids can relate to each other they have a group too they don't know that they are there for a reason also of like they know that they're not alone in their situation mm-hmm. and so you know owen my son gets to be with other kids that don't have their mom around and you know that's, you know, he has that relationship with his mom and, you know, that's another thing, but like, it's hard for him because he hates being going between back and forth. Like he hates exchanges. Yeah. And he now sees kids that like, don't even get an exchange. And it like, I humble, like kind of like, he hasn't complained about it really since then. Dude, almost. it's interesting because he, I mean, he's so young, but he's being surrounded by these other kids that are in different situations. I wonder It'd be cool to be like a fly in the wall, you know, and just. I heard a conversation and it was kind of sad, but it was amazing because it brought levity to the situation. Not to cut you off. No, that, no, you didn't. But that, that's awesome. Um, he was really sad. Like one night when we started, because I just picked him up and because we meet on Sunday nights at my house and yep. he's sad and crying. And he's like, I had to leave my mom. I said, I'm super sad. I, I don't didn't want to leave my mom. So, and one of the kids goes, I haven't seen my mom in a year. I don't know where she is. Oh my crap. And then his his sibling goes, Yeah, she's probably on drugs or she could be in jail. And he's and like, you know, my son kind of stood up. His kids. Seven and four. Oh my freaking shit. Oh my okay. And and so like 
And one kind of stood up and he like looked and he's like, okay, it could be worse. Like he literally just stopped crying all of a sudden. Like kind of stood there, and and the, the youngest was just like, yeah, you got to see your mom. That's, I wish I could see my mom. And he like kind of looked at the kid. Like he didn't know how to respond. He's six. Or, yeah. Know, what do you five. say? What I mean, well, to anybody at that yeah. point. And it's, it's just like, you know, it, it's kind of like my buddy Carl and I. Not to make light of this. Yeah. Sort of. Um, <laughs> it was pretty deep, <laughs> real quick. But that, yeah. I mean, that, that holy, yeah. like holy crap. So Carl and I, we were really good work buddies uh, when we worked together and we'd always throw the, your mama jokes at each other, you know, mm -hmm. and whatever, and, and try and burn his dad like, or whatever. My mom's dead. He'd be like, my dad's dead. And he was, dad was dead. Yeah. My dad's dead. And I'm like, damn it. Quit throwing that at me. Freak. <laughs> Make me feel like a jerk when I'm <laughs> trying to have fun. Yeah. Quit. Got and, you. But it was, it was, it was yeah. our thing. And so people around us would be like, what in the hell? <laughs> I'd be like, no. It's dark. Just how we are. It's dark. And I'm military. This is what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we, we have some stats though, Ryan. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. In the U.S., one yeah. in three households are single parent homes. One out of three. And I actually got this. This was uh, done by Focus on the Family. 60% um, of those single parent homes are not part of a church, small group, parenting group, book club, gym community, neighborhood group, no community group of any kind. And we always wonder why. Like, yeah. why, why aren't they part of this 67% of these single parent homes aren't connected to any connective group that's big yeah and and these are single predominantly yeah mothers yeah right and traditionally 91 percent are single mom homes yeah. and traditionally it's the it's women that want to go to church more yep now it's, it's proven that if a man goes to church the family will continue that tradition longer uh -huh. but it's weird how the if it's a single woman 67 percent of these aren't going to church mm -hmm. And, then, you Keep know, the reasons why, like, it's like feeling judged, ostracized, singled out, don't want to be a burden to others with their problems. Um, they're feeling insignificant, their singleness or lack of help with the child care. They like, let all these excuses be the reason why they're not in connection with people. Doesn't that sound like guys also? I mean, I, 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 single I, dads, I, I, I mean, do I feel judged? <laughs> yeah. Have I felt judged? Yes. Yeah. Have I felt ostracized? Yes. Have I felt singled out? Absolutely. Yeah. I don't want to burden people with my problems. Yeah, or, absolutely. My children or whatever. I mean, like yeah, that my, baggage, you know, my kid would be upset on a Sunday evening crying like, yeah, that that would be a limiting issue. Yeah. Um, you know, my singleness. Yeah. Like it's it's weird being a single parent and you don't know what people are thinking in the background of, you know, how I've talked about previously where I thought like a woman's like, I'm glad you're here, you know, as a single dad. I'm like, why? She's like, it must be hard, like being in your shoes like this. And I talked about it previously. Mm -hmm. So but like basically saying like. I did something wrong, so she's glad I'm at church so I can fix it. You can atone for your issues. Yeah, and, and I'm a sinner. Yeah, I'll be the first one to admit it. I sin. I guess what? I'm human. Yep. Um, You're a normal people. Yeah, glad you're here too, woman. Yeah. I don't Sweet. know what you did this week, but I'm sure something was wrong. Yep. Um, I'm pretty sure this moment counts. But yeah, and then but I'm those. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, it's okay. I mean, like, so it's funny because back when back when it was just me, right? Yeah. Nobody else. I was going through the the deep of the deep. You know that first couple of years yeah um, I know what you're talking about. I was taking all those depression like I, I if you probably take one of those depressed tests right yeah. and you score off the charts like you're depressed and you're like well I'm not depressed I'm just dealing with it yeah right I'm just I'm just wading through yeah like, you're like it's weighty it's heavy yeah but, but yeah I've experienced all these feelings yeah it doesn't yeah. make you know it doesn't make me whatever it's just I'm, I'm here's the number for the suicide hotline I'm, you're like what I'm yeah. not, that's not in my thought process Legitimately, like I, I did it at Safeco one day and I was doing the test and I'm like <laughs> Oh, like, so the oh HR my, sends you a letter like I was like oh my gosh man I I have issues you know and then I'm like wait I don't have yeah. I'm just dealing with it this is what life that, is but that's but, why that's why community is important though yeah and so six so, of, of these people like 68 percent of the surveyed single parents 68 percent of these people so look at the correlation here 67 are not yeah. part of a small group right 68 percent of surveyed have been diagnosed with anxiety depression or a combination of both or have gone to counseling in the last 36 months so the counseling part, I think, is healthy. I do, I do. I mean, I, I, I feel like you should omit that. I mean, yeah. well, not you, but they should omit that, right? Well, so that's, that's just saying that they've see, sought treatment for some sort of anything. Yeah, right. Okay. Stressor, whatever. So, so maybe Grief. even maybe even before lost. the divorce, they were going through counseling. It could be death. It could be whatever. You yeah. know. But it, it's crazy because, like, like I said, I mean, you know, I took surveys just because I wanted to know, and it was yeah. obviously part of our health and welfare, whatever stuff, right at work. But it was like, oh, you're depressed. I'm like, no, well, I'm just waiting through it. So 
I mean, could I have been diagnosed with anxiety? Sure. Or depressive disorder of some sort? Absolutely. Yeah, but uh, that's also can be environmental. It yeah. can be temporary. It I mean, can like, be was stress I, related. Was it I crying be, on the regular? Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent, I was. Um, you know, like, I've yeah, I was. Been there. Yeah. But, but that's healthy. Yeah. It's so good for you. It's so good to have that release. It just, it, it just blows me away. You Especially know? when you can have that release in a safe environment with other people that understand what oh, you're yeah. going through. Oh yeah. And that's what I love the group that I'm a part of. Cause it's like, you know, we can rally around each other. Some of us are having highs, like we're on our great times. Mm -hmm. Right. But then there's, you get humbled by like being, I've been in your shoes and it gets better. And it you does. Know? And you know what? I'm going to just going to sit and cry with you. You know, we okay. talked about the like throwing stones, right? Like yeah. I had that, like I had somebody come around me to like, give me that, like, acknowledgement that your situation's hard. Like, and, you know, it's hard, but it's not permanent. Mm -hmm. It's hard. It's not going to define you. It's hard, but it's not going to, like, last forever. It's not going to be, like, who you are forever. Yeah. But tough times make tough men, right? Or makes tough people, right? Tough times don't last, but tough people do. Yeah. Like, there's those sayings, mm -hmm. like, so there's a lot to be said when you're around people that can, like, galvanize you through your struggles. I mean, really, it's, it's, it's so healthy to cry too. Right. And most people try and hold it back. I've cried on Lang's shoulder multiple times. He's cried on mine. Yeah. Or grown men. And there was a, <laughs> there was a question that I like posing that it's like, why, you know, what's missing or what, why do you think that those numbers for anxiety and everything are so high or depression are so high or like reasons to hide are so high. And we kind of hit on some of them, obviously like the ostracizing and all that stuff. Yeah. But you just, when you, when you go through something like that and you feel alone, yeah. Because you feel I'm the only one that's ever felt this way. And you do. Yeah. You, you hundred percent. You're like, Oh, you know, and nobody you, knows how I feel. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it, it's like, it's like, we all believe that for some weird reason, it, it's like in, built in your psyche. You're like, Oh no, it's only me. Yeah. No one's ever felt. Woe bad is anything. me. Yeah. This is the worst ever. My life is so sucky. Isn't it weird how we do that? Like, yeah, we like, turn internal and we shut off it. Like freaking weird. Life is sometimes hard and we're not the only person going through a difficulty. I mean, and I'm not trying to minimize people's you're problems. You're 35, right? I'm 30, 37. Okay, 30. I'm sorry, 37. I know we're five years. I always got think some I'm 40. wisdom there now. I just Come always on. think I'm 40. That's my <laughs> issue. So like, but no, I mean like, so at 35, right? You were 33 when you went through it, roughly? What, 32? Uh, yeah, 33, so, 34, right in there. Yeah. Okay, so, okay, good. Timeline's good, all right, good. Yeah. So you, you're going through it and it's weird to think, I'm this old and no one has ever dealt with this before. And that's what our thought process is. <laughs> and like, we know there's like 95 year olds out there that have probably gone through three or four of these already. You know I've talked I mean? to like married people like at church that I didn't know were ever divorced. Right. And I'm like, just talking to them like, man, I could use some prayer on this or whatever. And like, you know, I got this and like, you know, they put their hand on my shoulder and they're like, so 26 years ago, I was in your position. I'm like, what? Yep. Like you're a pastor. Like what? That He's like, yeah, I've got, I got, you know, Cassie, my kid, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. We, like, we all believe that like, that nobody else has dealt with it and everybody else is perfect. Yeah. Like their relationships have been like, oh, it's you, clearly you've got a flawless relationship. Look at your kids and how amazing they are around you too. Yeah. And you're like, then you go to their house and their kids are like giant schmucks destroying everything, but they're really, really nice to everybody else. And you're like, they're the best kid on the planet, you know? <laughs> Why aren't they like that to me? You little bastards, get over here. <laughs> little and, aliens just running it's around. It's totally true, though. Burning down a neighbor's house, and you're like, no, they're like, fine. It's just, it's just a phase. But it's, it's totally, if you think about it, though, think about growing up, right? So, like, for me, every parent loved me. I was yeah. the best kid in the planet. Helped them clean, helped them take care of their stuff, right? At home, I didn't want to do any of that. Screw that. I couldn't clean my room at right? home, but I could go to my buddy's house, and I would, like, help do the dishes. Yeah, and that's where, that's where you were like, <laughs> that you were the best kid ever. Right. And so Why you can't know you be you, more like Ryan. I'm like, uh, right. And your other friends were like the same. And you're like, dude, he, you should my see mom would be home. like, who? I know. <laughs> but, and that's exactly it. Yeah. That's how you know you were raised. Right. Yeah. So we got to remember like these perfect, it's like looking at Facebook. Yeah. All these perfect ideas of relationships and families and whatever is going on. And you're like, Oh, why not me? No, they're just, just like you. You're just not seeing the garbage. Well, they just hide it. <laughs> they just hide the yeah. crappy parts. So yeah. it's funny though, but like, it's amazing to, th to think I, I, are there, and I don't know of many relationships that where it's like, except for maybe a couple. And I have a couple of cousins that are like this, where it's like, they've been with one person forever. Yeah, and it's like a great my, relationship. My cousin and husband, they got married. They were high school sweethearts. Yeah. And they've been married and they've got three kids. And forever. Awesome. Yeah. Right. And, and clearly we're not seeing 
whatever they've, they've crawled through because everybody crawls through the mud every once in a while. Sure. Everybody. Right. But like, and it's all relative. Mud can be different for some people. Like oh, what they absolutely. think is huge and horrible. Could, could be, be like a three in your world. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. Wow, whatever. That's <laughs> but, but you can't minimize it because that's still a 10 for them. Mm-hmm. Right. The scales are different. Absolutely. Like, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you're, you're, they're still going through the mud, but like the people that have the best relationships are the ones that have already been divorced. And they knew what they screwed up on. So they're like, oh, I'm going to fix myself now. We got this, right? <laughs> Round then, two. Yep. And right. the, other, the, other, the other person's like, oh, I fixed myself too. Now we're, now we're good. We're golden. Yeah. And we're like, we're handling it. And now you're like, oh, these people have such a great relationship. And, you, and it's because they both screwed up in the prior <laughs> one. Like, you know, that's why they made it so well. And that's why they give such good advice like us. We know what we screwed up on. I mean, it's pretty clear. Well, it's people that give good advice are the ones that have usually stepped in at a time or two. Side <laughs> note. Yeah. I'm on all these dad forums. I know you are too, right? Yeah. And this one guy was like, wife told me she's no longer giving me a BJ anymore. What do I do? And everybody's like, ah, oh, going off about the wife, right? And so I perk up and I'm like, I'm like, homie, you ever do it for her? You, uh, you take her needs at all? At all at all? Because it sounds like. It sounds like you just you're suck, not you meeting, suck at communicating and now she's shut down. So Well, like, no, it sounds like he's not meeting her needs. Yeah. So why would she do that for well, him? And, that's, and then my secondary mean, thought was this follow-up. How clean are you, dumpster boy? Yeah. Because if you're nasty, why yeah. would she ever? Yeah. Ladies, if he's nasty, don't ever. Never. No, Make yeah, him clean. Because yeah, he's not going to do it to you. <laughs> yeah. And no, I, I know I'm not yeah. trying to be gross, but I'm like. But but a lot of people again, they're not they're not seeing clearly. Let's look at the big picture here, though, too, because like that's just a microcosm. But how many times does that argument happen? Of insert X, Y, or Z, mm-hmm. my spouse doesn't do this for me anymore. I'm mad. Would you talk to him about it? Like, why do you think that that's not there? How when was the last time that you guys had a heart to heart conversation, sat down, turned the TV off, and just talked to each other? I feel like the way it was expressed on the forum was that this is something they had talked about just by how plainly he says it, and I'm like. What? I don't know any girl that's ever said that to like, that's to me. I was like, that's weird, homie. That, um, you're Maybe screwing- he's got like Don King and a leg lock down there. And that's why she doesn't want that. I, 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 I like- feel like I, I really, I, I really just feel like, like she probably feels like she's giving and giving and giving yeah. and giving. And he's just taking, and she's like, you know what? I'm done giving. Yeah. And I need could, to guess. It could have been like, because he doesn't do something around the house. I mean, like, I look at that and I'm like, there is so much more behind the scenes to oh, that, yeah, that totally. I wouldn't even comment. Cause I'm like, that is such as like, you're looking at a symptom, but I had to comment because everybody else was defending him. And I'm like, mm, 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 mm. no, no, he's looking for affirmation. That guy was looking for out of boys and that's not, not, no, yeah. there's more to it than that. A hundred percent. And, and in like, you know, 90% of conflict is due to a breakdown of communication. And it's a break and communication leads to a breakdown in like expectations. Yes. It can lead to a breakdown in a whole facet of areas, right? That's why and, and that comes into community. This is why community is so important. Because though. community can let you down too. Well, I mean, and nobody in since since that community's there, I was able to call him out. Yeah. Right? Because he was being supported the wrong way by his community. Yeah. And that's the thing too. Like, what are you going to your community for? Are you going to it to get your like get your hats on the back and we're going into it to like should be changed or, you know, I think it, that's where the arena matters. Like, so when you use the term yeah. community, I think it gets paint, painted with a really broad brush. And if you're in the religious side of things in the church community, community goes to uh, you know, even further direction to where, you know, it's meaning like small group or family, like you start to become I mean, tight knit, like family. And you talked about how it's, it's people needing to find their tribe. Yeah. Right. You mentioned that, and I mean, or wanting to belong to like-minded people. I want people to get me, like I don't yeah. want to be. Which yeah. is why you join those communities that that match your needs. Yeah, right. Or I want to be part of this because I know that it's good for me. I know that I'm. That's where it's good for us. Like it's intended. Well, ultimately, looking, so we're our hearts have two chambers. We yeah. were well four, four, but two sides. <laughs> we were created that way. Yeah. To be in pairs, right? Yeah. We know that. So we're always going to want to be desired. And to belong to something. And, and that, it's, that's what it is, right? You know, and I think that, you know, some of the, what we do with this can be described as a community. Yeah. Right? I mean, so if you're a single parent, you're often like taking the role of two people. Right. And this goes back to what I said before about like thinking about reasons for why people won't join groups. Right. Mm-hmm. Single parent, you're taking the role of two people. It's inevitable that you're going to look for reinforcement. hundred percent. And, you know, if in anything else, somebody that understands what you're going through on a daily basis, I can tell a story about, I, this is something that I'm like dealing with. Have you ever dealt with it? It's like, you know, I feel like I'd tell my kid a 
thousand times to do something and he doesn't do it and then i get upset and then i feel like the world's biggest schmuck of a dad because i got mad because my kid wouldn't put on his shoes for six times like i told him for seven times it took 25 minutes to get out the door because he kept losing his shoes yeah or like <laughs> my feet lost their bones and i can't get my shoes on or mm -hmm. like but i gotta brush my teeth or no the dog needed pets before i could put my shoes yeah. on and i mean it's like dude my kids are yeah are 16 plus and they still do that crap you know <laughs> why does it take you 90 minutes to get out of your bedroom let's go <laughs> and so like you know somebody that understands the struggles <laughs> that you go through but like sometimes you just need to be seen or heard yeah, or that's like really it. or just to belong like you need to sit with other people that know where you are yeah and well i mean that's that's why we created advocacy yeah that's what we are clearly we're a podcast clearly whatever this, we're a forming community. community with you guys yeah. that's what we want we want that interaction we love getting the messages we love hearing hey Listen to it. Go with there right now. There could be eight you guys out. sitting around right now, and I'd probably be having the same conversation. Oh, an identical conversation. Yeah, absolutely. And we'd all be bringing up random stuff. Yeah, and that's just how it is. Then we would go back to find the topic, and then you'd kind of rabbit trail away and find the topic. Oh, and yeah, then rabbit trail away. Like, but yeah, you want to have like, you know, and even for you ladies to listen to. Oh, for sure. Like, and because I'm in like two small, uh, two home groups, like mm -hmm. life groups. Like, I'm in my men's group, and I've got like a home group now, and like, both those things are very healthy. And they bring a lot of balance to people and you get outside input. Like I can learn a lot from single 50 year old Janice or, you know, married, you know, Brian and Jody and like, you know, I'm just throwing random names out there, trying not to name names, but like I can learn a lot from them, like being married 30 years. And Brian and Jody, you're like a Bruce Springsteen song. No, you're like a Brian Adams song or something. Uh, or like Bon Jovi. Jack and Diane, right? Find Sally and Jill or Sally yeah. and Jill from the fifties. Jack and Diane could be talking about those wild times they had down at the Tasty Freeze. There we go. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> totally perfect. We, we as humans, and we know this. We're creative society. Though, yeah. We, I mean, we are. We're, we're pack animals. Yeah. I mean, we, it's instinctual. It is instinctual. Like we were created this way mm -hmm. for a reason, right? There's very few people actually want to go off and be alone forever. Even the the most like stringent introvert will want somebody around just to sit with them in their isolation, and what not and just sitting literally yeah. just sitting. no you don't don't talk shut up but, like you can be there just yeah shh. and it's okay <laughs> that that's why we that's why we have have accepted animals in our lives well you look, I think like you look at Big Bang Theory. The comical side of that is that like some of the main characters they're all introverts mm -hmm. they really are but they've created a little pack so they created them and they have the, like the one extrovert that floats around that's the hot chick and kaylee coco uh by the way is it coco or kawako coco kawako whatever she's is, no a kawaka is an animal yes they're the happiest Quaka. smiliest little thing Quakas. ever I Quakas. Love kawakas because they're from australia the kawaka do, do you know what but sucks yeah, about them they have no natural predators you know that well, no, you're right. It's true. But you know what sucks about them is that they look so friendly and so wonderful. They are such little schmucks that if they are in danger, they will throw their children out and run. <laughs> they live only on the island of Tasmania, I believe. <laughs> they're only found in that one. Well, the Tasmanian island. devils. But they're not predatory. Tasmanian devils just eat rotted meat, by the way. They're not predators. They're scavengers. Right now? they're scavengers. You're full of crap. No, oh, I watch enough animal stuff with my Dude, kid that I've I seen this. enough Looney Tunes to know you're lying. No, they don't spin around in a circle really fast and like inhale a table full of food. No. What in the crap? No. They eat like garbage and rotted, like dead things. They're scavengers. You've just ruined my entire idea I'm of Tasmanian sorry. devils. I'm sorry. But quokkas, yeah, they like overran this community in Tasmania. It's really funny. Ryan's biology background <laughs> screwing everything up again. <laughs> Freaking jeez, dude. <laughs> but yes, if they get scared at birds, they will throw their young at birds. What the? <laughs> what in the actual hell? And they look so friendly and so cute. You're like, oh, you've got to be a great parent. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Holy jeez. <laughs> Hopefully, kawakas don't run in packs because you would have like, it'd be like lemmings tossing a little young out. <laughs> Get them. We did that. What the crap, Dad? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, give one. Awful. So, why do animals travel in packs, though? Like, look at wolves or look at wildebeest or buffalo or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. It's protection like they put the sick the weak the lame the exposed they travel in the center of the pack right yeah. the strongest surround those ones that are in the weakest moment 
and they support them. Well, it's, it's why wolves lead with the oldest and the most crippled. Yep. And the strongest are in the back. Yep. Or intermingled. Yeah. Yeah. Well, three strongest are in the back. And then there's another one that's like third in line. Yeah. But yeah. But they're not led by the pack leader. They're led by the weakest link. Yeah. Because they will sacrifice them. <laughs> I feel like that's <laughs> that's your food. So when it falls down, you just eat that along the way. Yeah, oh, we're good, okay, you know? yeah, I guess we're not going to let this go Some to waste. good beef jerky. <laughs> but like... <laughs> But it's, it should be the same for us, right? Like we should put our weaker ones or the ones that are vulnerable in the center of our pack, right? We should rally around them. Like mm-hmm. that's what community should be, right? It's like when we're on our weakest moment, we hope that our community would rally around us. When we're on our most vulnerable. Because if we decide to walk it out alone, dude, we're going to get picked off either by our own thoughts or society or lies from elsewhere. They're going to pick us off. Well, I mean, there's, there's much wisdom in age yeah. in living, you know, and, and when you value that and you have the ability to listen to the stories, then you pass on that wisdom. I mean, that, that's how we, that's how we passed on all knowledge before history was his story. Mm-hmm. That's why it's called that. And it was just passed down through generations. You know, and if, so if we, if we're willing to stay alone, we're more likely to find ourselves dwelling in our negative thoughts or emotions you know like it's in the loneliness that we're going to allow ourselves to dwell in our darkest thoughts 100 percent. like our dark loneliness is going to contribute to hopelessness right there's going to be no end of this how many times when you were alone in your car crying or in your house crying like after divorce or whatever were you saying like ah this will never go away like i feel like this is forever like you and well i mean i want to reach out how many of you teenage people right teens to college age to 25 yeah yeah. that that sit in your room alone and you start thinking what's my purpose why am i here do you wonder what's the point suicide is just like going off the freaking charts because people are alone yeah they they They, isolate yeah you got to stop isolating and stop dwelling in that you've got to get out of it get in community and sometimes it starts with you know like people reach out to like i know guys that like junior they play like online gaming that have like their own community there they're like they start playing with the same six seven guys dude right? that's that's why they do it we we actually went out and played pool with a couple of guys that we met online that have become great friends of ours yeah and so like it's like on all the online dad forms that we're part of like it's the men it's always the guys right that, that appear to have no one else or i like, want to give up I, I, what's the point of this yeah does it ever end i'm not saying does women don't better? commit suicide or don't feel hopeless Mm-hmm. But it's more prevalent in men because of the lack of the ability, sometimes in men, pride, I think gets in the way, uh, to reach out to other people. And one of our, it's weird because one of our processes as men is to go hide in our cave mm-hmm. and process and chew on and develop woods. it. It's just me and, me and God out in the woods. But it should be sometimes a couple of men. Yeah. Right? I mean, and that's really it. It should be a couple of men. You know, and it's... <laughs> This topic is hard because, like, I mean, it's not hard, but it's it's heavy because I see I've seen community change me. You know, I was yeah. in my deep stuff, and it was like the first person I talked to and reached out to was my pastor, and he's like, "Dude, you're gonna get in a group. You're gonna be in a home group. Like, you're gonna get <laughs> uncomfortable. You're gonna be invited, and people are actually you're gonna like. People are gonna love you, and you're gonna have to accept it. People are gonna want to just like not necessarily help you, like by fixing it. They're not gonna fix you." Yeah. They just want to be with you and they want to love you through whatever you're going through and be okay with it. And I mean, that's like, as a, as a guy, like, especially like somebody that wants to be the fixer. Dude, that's tough. <laughs> Cause vulnerable. we are fixers. That's yeah. what, that's what our duty is to be vulnerable. Our and duty. it's really hard to be vulnerable around strangers. One, but two, yeah. like now I look at it, those people are like family. I see them and it's like, I give them huge hugs my kid sees them. He gives them hugs. Like he's you guys got are like going four, through a lot. He's got like four grandmas. <laughs> it's awesome. Like you can have, they still remember his birthday. Well, that's awesome. Like that's I haven't, maybe haven't seen some of them in like over here and like on his birthday, like I'll get a message. Like we show a happy birthday for me. That's killer. That's totally cool. Yeah. And so like you get to, sh- they, but they get to share in the, in the celebrations with you too. But then you could be in there and theirs like, or in yeah. their low times. And then like, there's a lot to be said if you're going through a tough time and then you could help somebody else through their tough time. I agree, man. I totally. There's a lot of growth. The, in that. the neat part about being in community is that when we 
are with other pe people, right? Are with other people. I can say words now, I promise. In the same situation or not, we allow ourselves to be influenced and influence others in a positive way. Yeah. So Ninety percent of the time in a positive way, right? So if we travel in isolation, we allow the stories of we have and other stories to just fade out and pass, just like us. Yeah. It's do you do you want to have a story out there? Do you want memories to be made? Then you have to be with others. You you don't make memories alone. You know, I heard, I heard something tonight, like before I came over, um, about my story, like and and how it had. I didn't know this from having, you know, somebody had a conversation and, you know, Abby had a conversation with my parents. Oh. And um, just asking about like where I've been and where I'm now and which is cool. The growth question. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And, and, and so like, you know, she got an answer and they shared the answer with me from my, from my parents, like that my story has changed them and helped them grow. And they're in their 60s, you know? And it's like, and I never knew that. And like she said, like, my dad got emotional talking about me. Oh my gosh, your dad's so cool, though. <clears throat> I like your mom, too, but yeah. I haven't met her, so. <laughs> Still, if you're waiting on cookies is why. <laughs> Still I want those cookies. cookies. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I don't because I'm trying to, trying to get better. Watch your girlish figure. Uh, yeah. But no, like, so our kids can benefit from our community, too. Or our parents, for that matter, because I mean, your I kids already yeah. your, your kids already benefiting from community mm -hmm. and learning humility from the other kids around him that aren't getting what he gets. Yeah. It's awesome. You know, kids that go through divorce or their parents are three times less likely to develop long term anxiety depression if they can regularly meet in a group or a structured environment of their peers going through a similar circumstance. I think that's why it was so. That, so I think that's why the eighties, seventies, eighties, sixties, seventies, eighties. I guess early nineties was so profound is that we didn't have all this technology around us. And if we did, it was one of our friends that had it. So everybody went to their house. Scheduling play dates. There's, yeah. I mean, like all they, sorts of stuff, but it didn't matter what you were going through because it's not like you stayed at home and just sulked in it. You went to your other friend's house and you, and you lived life. You know, how many times like, <clears throat> hey, I don't know if you ever had friends that like found out that like, you know, you wouldn't have known that they were going through a tough time or whatever. And oh, like, dude. it's like, you know, and like your mom's like, hey, we're going to go over to so-and-so's house real quick and uh, drop something off. And you didn't know that a little goodie bag dropping off a box full of groceries or, you know, stuff like that. And yeah. it's like, you know, and the kids had no idea. Like most, my friends had no clue. Most kids didn't have any idea. Yeah. I mean, and you're not supposed to know as a kid, yeah. you don't recognize it. And that's what parenting is. Mm -hmm. We're protecting them from that heartache. And you learn about it later on when you're like 40 or 50 and you're like, wait, what? Yeah. And not we trying food stamps. What happened? You know, like what the hell? Well, that's the good job of the parents of not like involving the kid in, in an adult situation that they have no control over. That's yeah. just going to breed more anxiety and more like fear. And, you know, kids pick up on our cues. If we're going through a stressful environment, it's, 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 it's okay to show emotion to your kid, but it's, it's, you got to be careful in the manner and you do it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's okay though in community. Like, I think the healthiest thing is to see, let my son be sitting in my lap or something. Sometimes like he'll come upstairs during the men's group and like hear us talking about things that we struggle with. He needs to know that it's okay that I can talk about how I feel. Especially as at your age. With other people. Yeah. Cause now he's like, I can talk about my feelings. And like how many, how much you, we talk about like kids now that are dealing with suicide and all that stuff. How much of it do you think is related to not knowing that it's okay to talk about feelings or yeah, well, hundred percent, dude. I, I actually, I think it's all that. How many parents are sitting down with their kids going, look, it's okay. And, and model. It's it. all right to cry. You it's okay to be emotional. It. You can model it for them. Yeah. Don't be a, a, a basket case and, 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 and like, <laughs> you know, you're sitting there and having the worst moment of your life and having your kids sit there and watch it. Like, it's one thing if it's like somebody dies, mm -hmm. but it's like, you know, if like you're mad because your ex found somebody else. And you're just distraught over it. Don't let your kids see that. I don't think that's healthy. I mean, this, I mean, my, I mean, this is my opinion. I don't think it's healthy. But. So I, I think that it's hard to cover that up, but your kids shouldn't have to go through that with you. Yeah. Right. And that's what you're saying. Or if you're frustrated or you're mad or like say somebody said like the other parent is really pissing you off. Don't, that's don't not, put it on the kid. Yeah, you like, don't, yeah. you don't do that. And you can talk about you it. Start, you, that starts parental alienation. Yeah. 
Yeah. A hundred percent. That's what the community is for, right? Yeah. You can voice frustration in that safe space and you may get levity. You might get support. You might get like, ah, oh, me too, man. I totally feel you. And like, I'll be praying for you. Like mm-hmm. whatever it is, if it's, if it's a faith-based community, great. If it's not, and it's just like you have a book club or if it's a group of guys that you work out with, but you talk about all the stuff you're dealing with. Dude, sometimes communities, the best part is that you get humbled in a good way, you know, because you, you say something and you, and you want an expected outcome. Like when we were doing, when we were interviewing um, Elanon, yeah, right. And hearing a story in the first part or even the last part, and you want so bad for there to be justice I and all to that. I wanted to fight for him, man. I wanted to go like right? throw the gloves on and like. But it wasn't about that. And, and so at the end, you and I are humbled going, wait, you mean nothing happened? Yeah. You know, like what the crap? Sometimes you want that in community, but sometimes somebody humbles you enough to go, no, it's not about that. Yeah. And that's what Alan did for us also. God, he's a good guy. He is. Yeah. And so like, you know, the one thing about community that, I, that I'll share with that's not in our show notes is like the communities that don't last are the ones that remain superficial. Yes. If you do not ever broach on tough subject matter. If you don't open up. If you don't open up, you will not last. At all. But so when the tough times hit and you need somebody there and you've never broached opening up with somebody, you know, don't it be surprised all, if they're like, oh man, that's, that sucks. Let's go to the bar. It's like friendships. <laughs> it's like yeah. Fix your problems. But yeah. And yeah, it's just, it's, you know, so like being a community, other, it's scary, man. Well, it's like, scary to open up Yeah, and that that's where it makes it tough. If, if it's superficial. Yeah. It's scary. Cause you, you gotta, you gotta go, well, you know what? I really want to be in community. I really want to, I want to be part of this and you have to open up. Yeah. And I, I can't speak for women. I don't know how easy it is for women to open up. I got to assume there's some fear there. Maybe it's different. So, it could yeah. be like rejection or something. I don't know. But I think guys face that too. Like, man, what if my problems are just too deep for them and somebody's going to look at me and be like, man, man that's, that you're jacked up. And you know what? <laughs> I'm going to be like, yeah, that's why I'm here. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I don't want to be jacked up. Well, we want to, we want to heal. <laughs> that's what we're talking about. It, right. So like being vulnerable, it, it brings help. It brings empathy and understanding and, and some form of healing. Like you're going to be able to offer that either, you know, receiving it or you're going to be able to give wisdom or give understanding. Sometimes it's just being present for somebody else. I mean, even in the being present, you're still picking up stuff. You're yeah. still learning and, and you still have things you can apply to yourself. So if you're in a group of five, you know, you might not be the person talking. You might just be listening the entire time yeah. um, and just absorbing and taking the information so that you can have a better situation if you end up that way. Yeah, and you might get a text message three days later from the guy that was silent in your group. And he just like, dude, hey, just checking in on you to see how things are going. Here's my thoughts. Yeah. And then you're like, where, where was that three days ago? <laughs> <laughs> So. It's always your, your best thought always happens later on. Yeah. I love it. That's he's awesome. Pro, he's probably pooping. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you, you never know what's going on, right? He was on the toilet and he had his epiphany. And, or in the shower. <laughs> Such, best thinking. Is there like a shower notepad? My word. I, I feel like I would just use one of those shower crayons, right? That the little kids use. Just start writing on the, you can write your notes on the, the tub surround. It just makes, I mean. You'd like, be able to wash it off later. That's where my best thoughts are. Just keep one of those tub crayons in there, man. That feels weird. That feels really weird. <laughs> tub crayon. I'm that guy. Wow. Dude, I think we're at a good stopping point for this one. Absolutely. And, um, deep subject. Yeah. Hope you guys liked it. I, I think really we found, hope you guys I think we it. found yeah. common ground and found a landing point with it, too. Yeah, I really think so, also. That was good, but this is us talking through it all, too. Mm-hmm. Our community. Yeah. And thanks for being part of our community. Yeah. This community. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, for the Dad of Kizzy podcast, I'm Ryan. I'm Tristan. And we will uh, see you next week for episode nine. Episode nine. 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 Nice. <laughs> see you later, guys. Bye.